Welcome to Let's Talk Investing, a co-production of the Globe and Mail and the Investor Education Fund. I'm Rob Carrick, personal finance columnist at the Globe and Mail, and with me is Leslie Scorgi. Leslie is the author of Rich by 30 and its soon, uh, soon to come out sequel, Rich by 40. Leslie and I are going to talk about uh, financial traps awaiting 20-somethings who are just starting to take control of their personal finances. Leslie, it strikes me debt is this huge trap people are, are, are liable to fall into. How do they avoid that? Well, it's, it's tough these days. Debt has definitely become the norm, uh, not the exception. And our young graduates specifically are graduating with you know twenty to $30,000. And if you're in a master's program or PhD program, it's a lot more than that. On top of that, our graduates are actually graduating with a lot of credit card debt. And if you are not a graduate, you're still having a lot of credit card debt in the home. So our 20-somethings, 30-somethings are carrying about $8,000 on their credit cards at an average of 18.5%. So Leslie, you, you do a lot of public speaking. You've yes. probably spoken to a lot of 20-somethings. Give me a, a ballpark estimate of the average amount of debt they'd be coming out of school with and, and taking with them into the workforce. Um, I'd say at a minimum 30000 up to I've seen anywhere about fifty to sixty. dollars That's a phenomenal amount of debt. Yes. And how do you start attacking that? Because you, I mean, you, don't, you want to minimize the interest. You want to free up your cash flow and buy other better things, right? Yeah. How do you do that? Well, first thing you need to do is negotiate the interest rates, especially right now there's a lot of bargaining power available in the marketplace so if you haven't taken the time to call your lender do it second thing you can do is break your payments into uh, I like to suggest uh, bi-weekly or twice per month payments so that you're hitting the principal a little more frequently than a monthly payment and uh, that tends to reduce the interest sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. So the, the borrower has some bargaining power here? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. They have more power now than they did before. Okay. Um, so they also would want to, as they're, they're tackling their debt, don't forget that you do need to be saving at the same time. Now, I realize that there are a lot of uh, competing priorities for people's money these days, but one of the biggest mistakes that young people make is they just focus solely on paying down their debt, right. and then they never start investing. So you're saying carve off a little money for the savings. Absolutely. Even if it's uh, $50 a month that you allocate into your RRSP, you're going to get that tax benefit from contributing to the RRSP. And if it's a student loan, you can also write off the taxes on the interest on the student loan. So there's definitely two benefits that young people can take advantage of. Great. Thanks very much, Leslie. Mm -hmm.